everyone in the previous class we learnt about the in situ determination of modulus of deformation of rock mass using the plate jacking test or uniaxial jacking test so today we will take up two more methods uh, to determine the in situ modulus of deformation of rock mass these are radial jacking test and goodman jack test so as the name suggest first uh, uh, in the radial jacking test instead of uh, the application of the load only in one direction as it was in case of the uniaxial jacking test here the load is applied in the radial direction in uh, throughout the cross section of the test chamber so let us take uh, the uh, first the uh, radial uh, jacking test so in this case we determine the modulus of deformation of rock mass by subjecting a test chamber of a circular cross section to uniformly distributed radial loading so this is going to be something like this instead of loading only in one direction which was there in case of the uniaxial loading test here it is going to be this situation so in this case a circular test chamber is excavated and a uniformly distributed pressure is applied uh, to the chamber surfaces by means of uh, flat jacks which are positioned on a reaction frame so the loading situation will look something like this the deformation of the rock is measured by extensometers which are placed in the bore holes perpendicular to the chamber surfaces the pressure is measured with a standard hydraulic transducer now during the test the pressure is uh, incremented in a cyclic manner and the deformation is read at each increment and therefore the modulus is calculated corresponding to each of these so uh, to determine the time dependent behavior what we need to do is we hold the pressure constant and then we observe the deformation with respect to time now using this test method we need to load the volume of the rock which is large enough to take into account the influence of discontinuities on the properties of the rock mass because if we do not take that large volume then this effect will not be reflected in the value of modulus of deformation of the rock mass so the test should be used when the values are required which represent the true rock mass properties more closely than it can be obtained through less expensive uh, tests which are uh, uniaxial test or maybe the uh, plate loading test so if we need more accurate uh, prediction of the modulus of deformation of the rock mass then we must go for the radial jacking test but then you need to keep in mind that it is not that simple a test to conduct in the field it is more expensive as compared to uniaxial jacking test or plate loading test this is what uh, the typically the line diagram with respect to the radial jacking test looks like so you can see the various components are there which i have listed here and corresponding to these each one of these that that has been shown in the figure so the first one is the measuring profile which is this one so the measuring profile is there and then the extensometers have been installed second is the distance equal to the length of the active loading so that you can see that here it is second and then all these they are second this one and this one then uh, the third one is the control extensometer which is uh, at these locations so these are the control extensometers pressure gauge is here through which the pressure will be mobilized to these uh, jacks uh, through these jacks 
then uh, come to the fifth one which is the reference beam which is this one you see the center line of it so this is uh, what is uh, the reference beam then we have the hydraulic pump with the help of which uh, the load is mobilized you have the flat jack which is here you can see here this this portion is the flat jack here as well as here and then we need to provide the hardwood lagging which is here in between these uh, reaction frame plus the flat jack so here uh, the ninth number is the uh, shortcrete layer which you can see here this has been uh, provided here the shortcrete layer so basically the excavated diameter is this which is given by the 10th one or uh, 16 also because it is showing excavation radius so you can see that this is what is uh, your 16 so this is the excavated uh, uh, zone and on top of that uh, you have applied the shortcrete layer so this ninth one is the uh, shortcrete uh, layer or the zone where the shortcreting has been done so uh, the 11th one is the uh, measuring diameter then uh, we have the extensometer drill holes which are these then uh, we have the dial gauge extensometers then we have the steel rods which are uh, provided we have the expansion wedges which you can see here it is a part of the assembly for this extensometer and the related arrangement then we have the uh, radius uh, which we are calling at so called final radius uh, that is uh, the 17 one then 18 is the inscribed uh, circle after the laying off of the uh, shortcrete layer then uh, whatever is the resultant final radius that is what is uh, we are calling as inscribed uh, circle then we have the rock bolt anchors which are here this one also then uh, the steel ring which is provided here you can see that so these are the various components so let us see that uh, what is the equipment as far as the chamber excavation is there uh, this includes drilling and the smooth wall blasting equipment or mechanical excavation equipment which is capable of producing typically a 3 meter diameter tunnel with a length about uh, 3 times that dimension that means uh, 9 meters. The concreting equipment includes the concreting concreting the materials and equipment for the lining of the tunnel together with the strips of weak jointing materials for segmenting the lining. We have a reaction frame as I mentioned to you when I was showing you the figure. So, this comprised of steel rings of uh, sufficient strength and also the rigidity to resist the force which is applied by the flat jacks. So, for the load application which is done by the flat jacks, the frame must be provided with smooth surfaces and therefore, the hardwood planks are inserted between the flat jacks and the metal rings. This I already showed you in the figure, but take a look again here, uh, see these are the uh, hardwood leggings which are provided between the reaction frame and the flat jack. As far as loading equipments uh, are concerned, uh, these help in applying the uniformly distributed radial pressure to the inner face of concrete lining and it includes uh, the hydraulic pump and the flat jacks. So, these jacks should be designed to load the maximum of the full circumference of the lining with sufficient separation to allow the measurement of displacements. So, uh, the loading will not be in a particular area, but it will be throughout. 
like this. These jacks should have a bursting pressure and the travel consistent with anticipated load and the displacement. So, accordingly we need to choose the jacks. The load measuring equipment shall consist of one or more hydraulic pressure gauges or uh, transducers of uh, suitable range which are capable of measuring the applied pressure with an accuracy better than uh, plus minus uh, 2 percent. The measurements are usually made using uh, mechanical gauges. Coming to the next uh, uh, part of the radial jacking test which is the uh, equipment for the measurement of the displacement. So, these equipments basically monitor the rock movements uh, which are uh, radial to the tunnel and uh, they should have a precision which is better than 0.01 millimeter and here the use of multiple point extensometer will come into picture. What all are these, how these are installed, what exactly are their working, everything we will discuss towards the end when we discuss the chapter on monitoring and instrumentation. The directions of the measurement of the displacement is uh, normal to the axis of the tunnel and measurement of the movement it should be related to the reference anchors which are rigidly secured in rock and these are well away from the influence of the loaded zone. The procedure for conduct of the test is that with reference to this test we need to first prepare the test chamber. So, selection of this uh, chamber location uh, considering the rock conditions such as the orientation of the joints and other relevant parameters with respect to the orientation of the proposed opening because uh, the test chamber uh, may align or may not with respect to the orientation of the proposed opening. So, we need to be careful. The excavation of test chamber by smooth blasting to the required diameter which is uh, of the order of 3 meter with length equal to at least uh, 3 diameters that is 9 meter should be done. Then recording of the geology of the chamber and the specimens which are taken for the index testing these should be properly done with the help of code bore logs and uh, proper logging of the course like uh, uh, at what location you have uh, collected this particular core, core all those things should be properly uh, maintained. Then accurate marking and drilling of the extensometer holes should be done as uh, this en ensures no interference between loading and the measuring system. This should be done properly because if this is not there, there is going to be the effect of loading or the influence of loading on the measurement system with reference to the displacement. So, that will give us erroneous results. So, one needs to go for the installation of 6 point extensometers where 2 anchors should be deep beyond the tunnel influence and 4 should be as close to the surface as the uh, tunnel as possible. Assembling the reaction frame and the loading equipment is done after that. Then the lining chamber with concrete is uh, made to fill the space between the frame and the rock. Coming to the loading aspect of the test, so the test is performed with at least 3 loading and unloading cycles, this I also mentioned earlier. A higher maximum pressure will be applied at every cycle, I mean every consecutive cycle you have to apply for the um, little bit larger maximum pressure. The average rate of pressure application is uh, recommended to be 0.7 mega Pascal per minute on reaching the maximum pressure uh, for the cycle, the pressure is held constant for about 10 minutes 
and then each cycle is completed by reducing the pressure to near zero in the same uh, time maybe with the following the same average rate. So, what we do is in the first loading cycle you reach up to the maximum load then you maintain that load for about 10 minutes and then you remove that load near to zero and again uh, while unloading you need to follow the similar average rate. So, this is how the typical plot of applied pressure versus displacement it looks like. So, you can see that we have the loading portion and then the unloading portion like three cycles are there. So, wherever this is kept constant this is delta D deformation. Uh, coming to the calculation aspect related to radial jacking test, we need to correct the applied load values to give an equivalent distributed pressure that is uh, P1 which is on the test chamber uh, lining uh, is as follows. This we have to do it using this particular expression where P1 is summation of B divided by 2 pi R1 into Pm where this P1 is the distributed pressure on the lining at uh, the radial distance of R1, Pm is the pressure in flat jacks and B is the flat jack width. So, when I write here summation of B means that we have various flat jacks. So, it is the summation of width of each of those flat jacks. So, you can take a look here that this is what one flat jack this is another so this dimension is B. So, accordingly depending upon the flat jacks then you have to have summation B. This R1 radius uh, you can see here it is this radius which is R1 and Pm is the maximum pressure which is uh, shown here that is whatever is the pressure here in the flat jack B is the width of the flat jack here this one is B this dimension is B. So, again then we calculate equivalent pressure P2 at a measuring radius R2 this is just beneath the lining. So, you see that where is this R2 it is uh, just this is the uh, lining so just beneath that so here it is uh, P2 which is applied like this. So, this radius being the outside uh, of the zone of irregular stresses beneath the flat jacks and the lining and loose rock. So, this is how P2 is determined that is R1 upon R2 into P1. You just uh, substitute the expression for P1 and uh, like here this is what is the expression for P1. So, you just substitute it here and this is what is the expression that you are going to get. So, Pm into summation of B why we are writing it together is that because Pm is the maximum pressure in flat jacks and uh, summation B is the total width of the flat jacks and that is going to be equal to uh, P1 to R1 into pi. The this type of superposition is only strictly valid for the elastic deformation, but it also provides a reasonable approximation if the rock is moderately plastic in its behavior. So, although this is strictly for elastic deformation, but if the rock is moderately plastic and not very heavily plastic in its behavior then also you can use this expression. So, superposition of the displacements for two fictitious loaded lengths is used to give the equivalent displacement for an infinitely long test chambers. So, this superposition is made necessary by comparatively short length of the test chamber in relation to its diameter. So, what we do is uh, the result of these uh, long duration test uh, that is delta D is plotted for the 
maximum pressure that is maximum p2 on the displacement uh, graph so proportionately the test area is corrected for each cycle to give uh, the complete long term pressure displacement curve as has been shown in this figure so in this case uh, the elastic uh, and the plastic component uh, will be the part of the total deformation and uh, these uh, can be written by this that is the total deformation is going to be the plastic component plus the elastic component. So, these uh, can be determined uh, from the deformation at the final unloading. So, when you are unloading only the elastic deformation will be re uh, recovered and the remaining one which is there that will be the plastic deformation so that these two components can be separated out using the unloading test data. Now, how to determine the elastic uh, modulus E and the deformation modulus D? So, these can be obtained from the pressure displacement graph and using the theory of elasticity by adopting these two expression where E is equal to P2 R2 by delta E 1 plus nu by nu and if you just substitute instead of delta E the total deformation delta T then this expression will give you the modulus of deformation that is P2 R2 by delta T 1 plus nu upon nu where this P2 is the maximum test pressure and nu be the Poisson's ratio. The moduli of the undisturbed rock can also be determined. So, what we do is we anticipate a radial distance may be say R3 that is this one beyond this uh, uh, there is uh, no fissured or loose uh, uh, zone. So, this uh, if we consider this R3 as the radius to limit of assumed fissured and loosened zone, then uh, we can use these expressions to obtain the moduli of the undisturbed rock. So, the first expression talks about the elastic modulus and the second one is for the modulus of deformation. See here we are using delta T and here we are using delta E. So, this basically the differentiates the elastic modulus and the deformation modulus. The assumptions which are involved in the radial jacking test is that, that the solution which is given uh, is for the case of single measuring circle with extensometer anchors immediately behind the lining and it is also assumed that the rock is behaving uh, as a linear elastic material which may not be the case but then uh, this assumption more or less holds good uh, if uh, the rock is behaving as the moderately plastic as I already told you. Coming to the next test which is the Goodman uh, Jack test. So, you saw that in case of the radial jacking test you have to prepare a test chamber which is of uh, size uh, uh, 3 meter in diameter and length to be at least 3 times the diameter of this uh, test chamber. So, this is a large excavation. So, sometimes it may not be possible uh, to go for such large excavation. So, in that case Goodman Jack test uh, comes to uh, our rescue. So, here the test is conducted in the drill hole. So, all we need to have is a drill hole and we have a drill hole jack in this case. So, this drill hole jack is it consists of two curved rigid bearing plates of angular width of 90 degree which can be forced apart by a number of pistons. And these are used inside a drill hole of 76 millimeter diameter. So, we do not need to make very large excavation for the conduct of Goodman Jack tests. Now, two LVDTs are mounted on either end of the 20 centimeter long bearing plates to measure the displacement. Two return pistons uh, retract the bearing plates to their original 
position the total piston travel of the equipment is about 12.5 millimeter and the LVDTs have the linear range of about uh, 5 millimeter. We can apply the pressure of the order of 70 MPa by these Goodman jacks. Volume of the rock which is affected by the jack is approximately about 0.028 meter cube and it extends to about 114 millimeter into the rock which is away from the drill hole wall. So, let us say if this is the drill hole wall and uh, let us say at this depth you are conducting the test. So, it extends about 114 millimeter into the rock which is away from the drill hole walls that means this extent. There comes a term called jack efficiency which is the ratio of jack plate pressure to applied hydraulic pressure. There are two models which are used the first one is the 12 piston model which is used in hard rock it has the jack efficiency as 93 percent and the second one is the three piston model for determining the consolidation time properties in case of the soft rock, soil or, or the stiff clays. This has uh, the jack efficiency of 55 percent. The advantage of the Goodman jack test include that it gives an indication of the range of properties of the rock mass remote from the surface at an early stage of field investigation because it is conducted in a borehole. So, it is uh, possible to reach to a uh, few remote locations from the surface. Uh, large scale field tests uh, they require uh, the drifts to be conducted uh, uh, properly and therefore, they are more expensive and time consuming and therefore, Goodman jack test is adopted because it is conducted in a drill hole. So, as compared to making a drift or an edit or a test chamber, it is always uh, much more cheaper to have the drill hole and therefore, the cost associated with Goodman jack test uh, reduces drastically. This is how the test setup looks like. So, this picture shows you the Goodman jack along with the uh, hydraulic jack. So, this is what is the hydraulic jack, this is the Goodman jack and uh, the Goodman jack uh, in this case in this picture has been installed uh, inside the drill hole that means this is the test which is in progress. How the operation of uh, the this test takes place is uh, that, that the jack is uh, attached to the drill rod and it is inserted into a drill hole. Then a hand pump is used uh, for creation of the hydraulic pressure in those lines which are connected to the jack. What happens when you use this pump in turn it activates the piston and produces a uniform and unidirectional stress field at the bearing plate which are there inside the uh, drill hole. The applied hydraulic pressure is uh, measured with the help of the pressure gauge. Then the deformation of the rock can be measured by two linear variable differential transformers which we call that them as LVDT and the data these are displayed at the surface because all these are connected uh, at the surface. So, after the test uh, these uh, bearing plates are retracted by the reverse action of the piston and uh, then the complete jack is withdrawn uh, from the drill hole. Coming to the calculation like we have conducted the test then uh, how to obtain the modulus of deformation. So, you see that uh, this is the schematic of loading of uh, drill hole jack. So, it is at a particular location and this is how the loading will be there you see. So, the angle beta basically it uh, shows the angle of the loaded arc. 
so you can see that this is uh, what is this angle beta so from here it is plus beta here it is minus beta so uh, the modulus of deformation can be determined by this expression which is 0 0.86 into jack efficiency delta p upon delta d upon d into k which is a function of Poisson's ratio and the angle of the loaded arc. So, here it should be beta. So, uh, this delta p is the pressure increment in kg per square centimeter, j e be the jack efficiency, delta d is the diametral displacement increment in centimeter, d be the original diameter of the drill hole which is in centimeters and as I mentioned k nu comma beta is a constant which depends upon the Poisson's ratio which is nu an angle of the loaded arc beta which is shown here in this uh, figure. So, based upon what type of piston that you are using for this, this uh, jack efficiency can be either 93 percent or it can be 55 percent. So, as you can see that in this case it is the uh, 93 percent. So, because it is multiplied by 0.93 here. Okay. So, this is how the calculation for the modulus of deformation can be done uh, using the Goodman Jack test. So, these are some of the references from which uh, the uh, material was uh, taken uh, for the preparation of uh, this particular lecture. So, this finishes our discussion on the in situ determination of uh, modulus of deformation of rock mass which is a very very important property as far as rock masses are concerned. In the next class we will start with a uh, new uh, chapter uh, which is on the rock mass tunnel support interaction analysis. So, first I will explain you the concept of rock mass tunnel support interaction and then we will uh, see one particular analysis which is Ladani's analysis. Thank you very much.